My name is Claire Ellinger and I'm a master's student in the Chicago Botanic Garden Plant Biology and Conservation Program. I started out creating a collaborative thesis with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service as a endangered species intern and that thesis um, has expanded over my time as a master's student and my work focuses on the conservation of the eastern prairie fringed orchid. Um, and this summer I've continued working with the Fish and Wildlife Service while finishing my thesis. And today we're out at Nechusa Prairie, which is a Nature Conservancy owned site. And this is a great example of a site where a reintroduction or an introduction was very successful. Our work today is assessing the reproductive fitness or health of this population. There's a lot of different ways you can measure reproductive health in a plant population, um, but today we're just counting seed pods and we're counting the ones that have been pollinated by this species natural pollinator, the hawk moth. Now we'll go to the Chicago Botanic Garden where we conduct genetic analysis. The eastern prairie fringed orchid is a species facing considerable threats and is listed as federally threatened. The populations that persist today are smaller and increasingly isolated compared to their historic distribution. There was also concern that the species' primary pollinators, four hawk moth species, have decreased in abundance resulting in ineffective cross-pollination of remaining populations. To concern that pollinators are not adequately pollinating these populations, volunteers have effectively stepped in for the populations in Illinois. These actions are referred to as genetic rescue. Um, they include hand pollinating plants with pollen from within the same site, and most recently, hand pollinating plants with pollen from a nearby site. In some cases, adding seed from nearby populations is done in an effort to reconnect populations that were once joined by traveling pollinators. However, we know little about hawk moths and how they really pollinate these populations, and if what we are doing reflects what would have happened naturally. To know if we are helping these populations requires monitoring changes in these populations over time. Therefore, we conducted a direct assessment of genetic management in these populations over the past 17 years. We are able to measure the outcome of these genetic rescue efforts and have seen positive changes. Our results suggest that genetic management leads to an increase in genetic diversity, and based on preliminary results, we expect this increase in diversity to lead to an increase in seed viability over time, ultimately improving the reproductive fitness of these populations.